Okay, I'm going to show you a video now of how I've implemented uh, Leo Bodnar's BU0836X card, uh, which acts like a joystick emulator, allowing you to connect up to 32 buttons plus 16 rotaries and various other bits and pieces to your computer. I'm using it for flight simulator. Um, it's taken me about three hours to connect up uh, four toggle switches and three other switches, which I've now successfully implemented in flight simulator using. Uh, FSUI PC and the mouse trapping technique so that I can now start and stop my engines, my APU, APU bleed and the ignition switch in my Airbus A330 without having to touch the mouse with a keyboard. So watch and learn. Okay what we've got, uh, these are the switches on my homemade pedestal which is crap because it's a draft if you like. This is just what I'm using to prove the technology to myself. I've put in four switches as you can see. Um, the theory is that I can fly an A330 or a 340 with this aircraft or any two or four engine aircraft. Um, engine 1 and engine 2 start and run switches. Um, next down here, obviously engines 3 and 4, uh, we have the ignition switch which switches from normal mode to ignition then back to normal flight again. This switch is a push to lock switch, so you push it down it locks and you push it again to release. And that starts the APU master switch and the ignition, um, the run switch, start switch for the APU. And this one is a toggle switch only, um, press, press again, for the APU bleed. Um, so using these switches I can start and stop my engines in my Airbus without having to do anything at all with the keyboard and the mouse. So we'll start by starting the APU. Uh, press that switch and the APU starts up for me. So you can see the APU is now available and I press the APU bleed switch. And this is the switch here on the pedestal. And the bleed is on straight away, nice and easy. I'm now ready to start my engines. So I'll switch my ignition switch over to start. So on the pedestal this is the switch. I'm pressing the switch on my pedestal. I'm ready to ignition start mode. And we're ready to start our engines. And we can see the engine display has changed now to show that the engines are ready to go. And then flick engine number two switch from off to run. It's moved. And engine two is starting. Apologies for the lights changing. Uh, the aircraft's just detected that we've gone into nighttime mode. Here we go. You can see the engine is N1 is spooling up. Once that hits about 17-18% on this particular aircraft, I can start the second engine. So that's pretty stable there now, so I flick the toggle switch for engine number one. And straight away I can see the engine number one N2 is spinning up. You should see the exhaust gas temperature start to rise now as well. And the engines are starting. So both engines are now stable, about 17-18% uh, N1, so we're happy with that. You can see the APU bleed is still on, make that a bit bigger for you. APU bleed is still on, we don't need that anymore, so we press the relevant switch. APU bleed is off. I'll just show you the overhead panel. This is the overhead panel, and uh, over here we can see these are the APU master and start switches. Um, which I've slaved just to one switch on my uh, pedestal because you never use one without the other basically. So I'm going to press the relevant switch now to turn off the APU entirely. And both switches have gone dark now to show that the APU has been switched off and it's disappeared from here. So that's nice and easy. Final thing we need to do is back on our pedestal we need to sit, switch the engine start switch back from start to normal mode. So I press my switch on my pedestal And it's switched back. And finally, um, engine cutoff. I'll just flick the switches. You can see them move, and the engines immediately spool down. And that's an engine startup and shutdown.